dumb fan clutch. What's a fan clutch used for anyway? Hi everyone, my name is David and welcome to Tigner Adventures. For those of you that are subscribers, uh, thank you for subscribing and watching and supporting our channel. For those of you that have not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and also ring that bell so that you get notified of uh, our videos that we produce. And then of course, if you can give us a thumbs up, that's even a better thing. So we appreciate that. We appreciate all the support from everyone. Uh, so as it goes, my wife Ninette and our cat Tansy, we live in this motorhome full time. And one of the issues that we had uh, last year, uh, about this time, we blew a radiator hose on our motor home, and boy, I'll tell you, when that thing blew, it uh, the cover that covers the engine popped up and steam went everywhere. We thought it was smoke. We thought the engine had actually blown up. And uh, thinking back on that, um, I figured out that uh, we'd been running pretty hot, and normally our thermostat set at 195 degrees. And so the engine runs right around that, maybe 200 degrees. And then when it gets up to about 230, I hear this really horrible noise. And I couldn't figure out what that was for a long time until I started talking to a few different people. And it sounded like a big fan, like a jet engine was taken off or something. And so then someone says, well, that's your fan clutch. And it's like, what, what the heck is a fan clutch? And they said, well, a fan clutch comes on when your engine gets hot so that it pulls more air through the radiator. So, I've got a fan clutch right here. This is what it looks like. And it sits on the front of the engine, goes here. So there's a water pump here on the engine and that's regulating all the water through the engine. And it goes through the engine, through the radiator, which is the thing with all the little fins. And I'll show you that when we get into the engine compartment. And it blows, it goes through that and the air going through there actually cools the water down, which actually cools the engine down. So this mounts onto that um, water pump and then the actual fan mounts here, well, right back here. It actually mounts onto this setup right here. And if you look at the front of this, it's got all these little fins and things in here. So when this gets warm, then what it does is this engages and the fan starts going so when I say engages like this normally just sits there and turns when the engines running and when this gets hot then it locks into place and then the fan itself speeds up and that's why it sounds like a jet engine taking off because the fan makes I mean it's pulling a lot of air through that radiator to cool that water down and so normally that uh, in the past has happened about 230 but um, it started getting where I was always running around 250, 260. And so I noticed it was staying really hot and not cooling down as much. And of course, when you pull hills with a big load, then it even heats up more. So I was really concerned about it. And so after that hose blew, I replaced the hose. And then I realized that if I got under my coach and took the fan and kind of went, you know, just kind of flipped it, that it would just sit there and spin really fast. And if you notice this thing, it doesn't spin at all hardly, okay? And so the fan clutch was bad. That's how you determine if it's bad or not. If it just sits there and spins, it's bad. It's not supposed to do that. So anyway, so I replaced the fan clutch. I went down, at the time I was just in a little town and they only had a Napa. So I went to Napa and I got a, another fan clutch, looked just like this, put it in, and when I tested it, it did the same thing. So I was a little confused, uh, but uh, we left that town and, and went on and we kept overheating. And so that fan clutch was bad to start with. So I have no idea. I mean, it was open, so I was kind of concerned a little bit, but whatever I got wasn't the right thing. So we uh, nursed our way to Salt Lake City uh, where we we're gonna visit our kids. And I went down to O'Reilly and said, hey, do you got a fan clutch? And they gave me one and I grabbed it and it's like, oh, wow, this is way different than the last one I got. And so I went ahead and replaced it and drove with it. Well, it doesn't really engage until I hit about 250 and there's no setting on these. And so I just didn't really understand it. So uh, when I got down to Yuma for the winter, I took it back over to O'Reilly and I got another one because they have a lifetime warranty. And uh, that's what I like about them. So I put it on 
came back up now we're up into St. George, Utah on our big summer trip and it's doing the same thing. So I went to the Ford dealer and I was talking to uh, this parts manager and he says, you know what, I had that same exact issue and I replaced it with one of these fan clutches. Now maybe it's a story, I don't know, but anyway, he said he still had issues. So he took it to their mechanic and the mechanic looked at it and said, everything checks out. There's nothing wrong with your setup or anything. So, and then he says, so wh where'd you get your fan clutch? And he said, I got it over, you know, at, I don't know if it was AutoZone or O'Reilly, but he picked up one, they're 40 bucks. And he says, swap it out with a Ford one and let's see if that makes any difference. Well, this Ford fan clutch, $180. So I'm hoping that it really is different. So anyway, he said he swapped his out and didn't have a problem after that. So, so that's what I'm hoping. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this and uh, we'll show you the steps to doing it. This will be my, uh, I think it's fourth time or fifth time. So I'm getting really good at replacing this thing. And, and so I'm gonna show you how I do it and then uh, you'll know if in case you have that issue. I have pulled my uh, center console out and so it's uh, leaving that nice little opening there and I'm going to lay on this instead of laying on the engine so we can get to the actual fan clutch. So the fan clutch they're kind of universal in some ways and so what they've done here is they've actually got eight holes here four on the outer edge and four in just a little bit. In our particular case, the holes that we're gonna be using is the four on the outside edge. So that's where we're putting our bolts in, that matches up. And then the center spindle from that um, water pump actually pushes into here. So it kind of pushes in there and that helps with the uh, temp of the, uh, you know, the radiator or the water in the water pump, you know, that gives us our temperature there a little bit and it just makes a nice tight seal so it doesn't wobble around. So looking down in the big hole, we see the fan clutch down there and the fan is bolted onto the back of the clutch. That's a half inch uh, bolt. There's actually four of those on the clutch. So I'm gonna loosen those up and just, I'm gonna rotate the fan around and just kind of loosen those. I'm just gonna leave them on there, but I'm gonna loosen those up. And then on the back side, which is where the uh, water pump is, is four other bolts and they're 7 16 so they're a little bit smaller. I'm going to actually take those completely off and then once I do that I will um, lower that uh, fan blade and clutch down to the bottom and just kind of set it there. So if you look in the front there, in front of the fan clutch you can see that is the radiator and you can see the little fins and things and that's what the water goes through and and the air goes through there you know to cool the water down and that's how that all works okay so you do not want to poke a hole in that so you got to be really careful that when you undo the fan that you slowly lower it down and set it down and we're not going to be taking the fan itself out we're just going to take the clutch off the fan and then pull the clutch out put the clutch back up there and hook it back to the fan again. Things are kind of close, getting your head underneath the dash and in here, but um, I'm actually using a wrench here that's got um, ratcheting built into it. That's the simplest way to deal with these. All right, so I'm gonna reach down in there and I'm gonna put this on there. And I'm gonna hold my thumb right here against the fan blade to kind of ease that forward. And I'm just loosening these up doesn't take a lot um, to get those undone because this is aluminum and you don't want to be stripping that out so you're just making them nice and snug when you put them back on and all I'm gonna do is keep rotating this around until I do that with all four nuts that are on here or these are bolts so now you can see the fan clutch there at the very top of that picture right there and then back from there past the little stem you can see some nuts that are right down here by the fan belt. Those, there's four of those holding the actual fan clutch on. And the uh, fan belt is on the, the pulley system there. And that pulley is part of what those bolts is holding on also. We're gonna go ahead and undo those and we'll be able to take the fan clutch off of there. I mean, they're kind of hard to get to, but you don't wanna rotate the engine around 
without those in there because then it'll misalign the holes and then you'll have a hard time because then you'll have to actually pull the fan belt loose and everything so this method here I've done it several times and I haven't had to undo the fan belt or anything so it's worked out really well as long as I don't move the engine at all so anyway so this is the easy way to do it I'm gonna go ahead and, and loosen those and actually take those off and then we'll actually uh, lower that uh, fan blade down into the bottom of the cavity there now the way this is oriented it's easy to get these top three it's the bottom one that's a little harder and I usually have to go down underneath to take that one off so you can see that there's not a lot of room right here I can hardly get my hand there there is more room over here so I can kind of get my hand and arm up in there a little bit better and you can kind of see the nuts on the fan on the clutch actually going against the water pump there okay so I pulled that one bolt off down below there's not really any way to get a camera up there to really show you so you just kind of put your hand up there's not a lot of space there either so you barely get your arm up in there and get the wrench on there that's why the ratcheting wrench works pretty good all right so I went ahead and took those uh, top three bolts off and I have lowered the fan clutch and fan blade down and rested it right there against the engine with uh, making sure that I did not uh, damage the radiator at all and now I need to go down below and um, undo the fan clutch so I can pull the fan clutch out out the top here put the new one in there and lower the fan blade back down so I'm gonna go back underneath now and put the four bolts in that hold the clutch to the actual fan Now that we have the bolts in the fan clutch and we've hand tightened them, we're back up on top. And the goal here now is to lift up the fan with the clutch on it and place it onto this stub, which is part of the water pump. Once I got it in place where I wanted it, then I got Ninette to hold it in that spot. And then I was able to get the first bolt here started. All right, so all of those are nice and snug and tight. And we are done with this part of it. So if you notice, See, when I try to spin this, it doesn't really spin, and that's how it should be. And if yours spins freely, or pretty close to it, then that's how you know it's bad. Okay, we're done. <laughs> My gorgeous helper right there. All right, we are ready to start the engine. Okay, well that finishes the fan clutch. It's in, it works, life is great. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, hopefully you know what a fan clutch is now and why we need it. Uh, when the fan clutch isn't engaged, then it's basically free spinning. And the reason they do it that way is to help on your gas mileage. You know, there's no sense making all that noise and pulling all that air through there if the engine uh, isn't uh, needing it. And so. That's where the fan clutch really comes into handy. So, but you gotta have it working. If it doesn't work and kick in when your heat starts getting hotter on your engine, then that's when you start to overheat. So hopefully this is gonna resolve our issue. We should run, uh, we wanna run about 200 normally, but uh, it, we don't want it to get too high. Uh, and some people say, oh, you want your engine to run cooler. Well, actually that can be bad on your engine to actually make it run cooler too. So uh, you want it to run the temperature that the manufacturer set up for that 
and in our particular case we use a thermostat that's 195 they want the temperature to be between 200 and 230 and so that's kind of where that uh, range is uh, that is the little happy spot for that engine to help uh, make it last forever so with that said hopefully uh, this video has been uh, helpful to you and we'll do some others whatever but make some comments below and also remember give us a thumbs up if you can we really do appreciate your help on things and hopefully this is helpful to you um, I think that uh, anything you can learn um, and see ahead of time makes it a little easier job for you in this particular case four times I've done this at least four times maybe five I don't know but this time it went really easy so you know you keep doing it over and over and over uh, eventually it gets pretty easy but uh, I, I wouldn't suggest doing that. I, I think just once is enough if you can get the right parts to start with. So anyway, with that done, that ends the video. And we'll just uh, say we'll see you down the road.